to you from the Windsor Family Credit Union Center, the masterpiece on the queue. And we're talking UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championships, has become huge in North America. Very popular right here in the Windsor and Essex County parts. And our panel will explain that to us and talk to us about uh, getting involved with the UFC, if indeed you desire to do so. Uh, so let's get to the panel right now. I'll introduce my far left. Uh, he is the director of the Windsor Jiu -Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Academy. Ron Dupi. I almost, almost bought you that time, Ron. See, I'm trying to stay disciplined here. I'm trying to impress you, Ron. So. But uh, tell us quickly about the academy. Uh, Windsor Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Academy is a, a straight up Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school where a lot of schools teach mixed martial arts. They teach just striking. Uh, they may throw some wrestling in. We're all about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is the ground portion of what you see in the UFC. Although they're not wearing uniforms, they're in, you know, just the shorts and stuff, but they're working at high level Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Some of the best fighters out there. Are the guys you see those sweet submissions on the UFC? That's the guys we're talking about. They have a great background in that persona jiu jitsu. Okay. And, and again, of course, a lot of people think, well, here's maybe more fighting, more violence. Not the case here. I mean, you're teaching discipline. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, just, just to compare it, say, with another martial art, there are some places around you can get a black belt, say, in karate in two or three years. It takes up to 14, well, not up to, but it can take up to 14 years to get a black belt in Brazilian jiu jitsu. 14 years. 14 years. So wow. when you hear him introduce a guy and they'll say, this is, uh, this is such and such, he's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu fighting expert. That means that he is already a black belt. So he's put in 12 to 14 years. They consider him an expert just at the, at the black belt level, which is almost unattainable. Now, is this the best form of martial arts? And, uh, obviously, you're sold on it because that's what you teach, but is it the best form of uh, martial arts? Well, there's, there's three phases of martial arts there's a stand up striking phase, there's a clinches and throw phase and there's the ground fighting phase. And I teach just the ground fighting phase. If you want to be a really good striker, you want to go to a Muay Thai or Western boxing school. If you want to learn takedowns and uh, takedowns and throws, you might be a, a wrestling background for takedowns and takedown, uh, takedown counters, how to stop takedowns if you're really good, or judo to transition all that. So you need to have at least four different martial arts to be a mixed martial arts. Well, wow. there's a lot, a lot of work involved with this. Lots of okay, we're going to talk more to you, Ron. Thanks for coming in today. I appreciate the time. Sitting to my immediate left in between Ron and myself, a uh, longtime friend, uh, one of the smartest uh, gentlemen I'll ever know in my life, uh, certainly uh, helped me through a lot of uh, schooling in my uh, younger days, and uh, certainly was a great friend and an uh, unbelievable sportsman. He's also very involved with the martial arts scene. Jack or Mary is from uh, Miller Canfield uh, Lawyers, right? You're, you're, you're practicing your law there now? Absolutely, commercial real estate. That's good. Okay. All right. Uh, your involvement, uh, the attraction to martial arts uh, for you, Jack? Oh, I, I've been involved in various martial arts for years, going back to Taekwondo as a kid, uh, doing uh, Shotokan Karate when I was in law school, and then uh, Ishinru Karate, which uh, Ron is also a fifth round master, master as well. So it's always had an attraction. You were mentioning before about the discipline involved in the self defense and the health aspect as well. So, yeah, I've been involved in a lot. It, a lot of people, it, it's a sport. Yes. Their sport, I and mean, it doesn't really get the recognition of other sports. We have our what I always call our four major sports: baseball, football, basketball, hockey. And then there's all the other sports: tennis and soccer and what have you, and all that stuff. Uh, but this doesn't get a lot of recognition, like other sports. Why? I think that's going to change now. I think what you're going to see with the explosion of the UFC and MMA, I think you're going to see the the highest rated combat sport right now has to be boxing. Boxing's in trouble. And both because of the emergence of UFC and MMA, but also because boxing really doesn't have the marquee people it used to have. So I, I think you're, you're definitely going to see, especially with what happened with uh, UFC partnering, partnering with Spike TV, so it's constantly on television. It's got that great male 18 to 34 demographic now. I, I think you're going to see that change in a big way in the next few years. I remember years ago when all of this first came out, there was the Octagon. Um, I can't remember what it was called back then. Maybe it was the Ultimate Fighting Championship back then as well. Uh, and I, I was covering a little bit of it. Uh, of course, we had a, a fighter from Windsor, Dave Benito, uh, who was very involved with it. And I did some stories with Dave. And I just remember going through all the training that Dave went through. I did this kind of documentary type thing. And I was really impressed with, with all the strategy that was involved with with the fights, because when you watch it on television, it looks just basically like a street fight, but certainly that's not the case here. True? Yeah, true. Not that fair to say? I mean, not all. there's so much strategy going on. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get break down a fight, if you watch it and break it down with, with some knowledgeable people, you really get to see how they're closing the distance, how they're using leg kicks to get the guy to drop his hands, 
how they're slipping under punches for takedowns. George St. Pierre, uh, who's the current welterweight champion, is just phenomenal at takedowns. Guy was a punch, 100 miles an hour. Next thing you know, he's on his back. The, the timing is impeccable. His, 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 his physical conditioning is just off the hook. Before we get to talking today, and uh, as you mentioned, Jack, it, it is truly exploding right now onto the sports scene. But back then, and, and again, doing the the uh, story with Dave, uh, there was that that thought or out there that it was it was too violent, and that uh, it was a street fight more or less in this octagon, and uh, there was also the possibility of being seriously injured and permanently injured. And well, I, I, I mean that that exists in any sport. Let's face it, you, know, you play hockey. You Break a leg, oh, dance football, but, but th it was more prevalent back then. I, I think it, it got a lot of bad press. Uh, in the early days, the rules were different. Um, there were weight divisions, time limit, limits were out the window. Uh, a lot of techniques were legal back then. Uh, groin strikes, headbutts, that's all gone. They wear gloves now, their weight divisions, and so on. In terms of the safety of it, uh, I think back to the number of, of deaths that have been in, in boxing over the years, and I think in mixed martial arts, I've heard of one uh, since it's been around. The other thing to keep in mind with respect to UFC and mixed martial arts is that if, if a fighter is being beaten, overcome, he can, what's called submit, give out, or whatever you want, tap out. Uh, think back a few years, Dom, to a famous fight, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard and Roberto Duran, the famous No Mas, when Duran gave up in the middle of the fight. They acted like he had committed some huge crime in the middle of the ring. Uh, in the UFC, there is no shame when a fighter giving up. In fact, they will stop the fight. I'm sure Ronald will will stop the fight a lot quicker then they won't boxing with the fighters in trouble. And I think there's, there's more safety for the fighters than there is in boxing right now. But obviously, UFC had to acknowledge the fact, and again, it was in its infancy stages, we'll give it that benefit of the doubt, but they had to acknowledge the fact that some changes had to be made because there was a, a, a danger element involved with it, and certainly uh, it did appeal maybe to a lot of fans that were kind of on the fence with the sport, saying, oh, you know what, it's too much like a brawl much like a street fight, and they had to address that problem. The biggest change came after uh, there was a change of ownership in the UFC, when Horry and Gracie had first owned the UFC up until either three or five. And how good was he, though? Just quickly. He was Horry? Pretty dominant, wasn't he? He's one of the... Well, Horry was, never was, was a brother that, uh, that made the name. Horry and... Uh, Horry and his other brothers, those guys are just... Uh, Hoist was... They picked Hoist because he was kind of lean and a little bit scrawny. And they wanted to throw him in against the monster to prove that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu were yeah. Because his father was about five foot six, 135 pounds. He fought, he just died actually uh, two weeks ago, Elio Gracie. Yeah. At 95 years old, he was training a week before in Brazilian wow. Jiu Jitsu. He died in pneumonia. But Royce, they, they, they had bigger brothers. There's uh, eight brothers in the family, I think, but they had bigger brothers. But they put him in because they didn't want it to be a muscle thing or a size thing. And he beat all comers. Yeah, he was uh, basically a submission all the time. Oh, right? was submission. Yeah. I remember that very well. But back to the original question, Ron, uh, they obviously had to make these alterations, and Jack explained them, but the oh, yeah, important okay. was this so the sport could go forward. Well, once once they changed ownership, Maureen Gracie sold it to the Fertitta brothers and, and Dana White, who's a manager, of course, he's, he's a big guy now. Um, then they got sanctioned by the boxing commissions. They had to go under the boxing kind of guidelines. But once they, once they formulated all the rules, and Jack, Jack said there was no rules back in the old days, you can stop me, whatever you wanted. Once the rules came in and they became sanctioned, it was a lot safer. And as far as fighter safety, if you get caught and your eyes roll, there's a lot of time. If you're on the ground and you can't defend yourself, the referee will jump in and stop the fight. And boxers yeah. didn't stand the eight count. Yeah. What do boxers do? Five to nine. Right. Right. Five nine. They can get knocked out again. Another concussion. Okay. UFC is much safer. Okay. You say it's much safer. Before we get into that debate, because I think a lot of people will debate it, why has the UFC taken off the way it has? And I don't think you said it best, Jack. Uh, it's basically yeah. replaced boxing in a lot of ways. I mean, it seems as though a lot of boxing fans have come over to that side of the fence and are now following the UFC faithfully. Why is that involved? I think it all comes down to, as a friend of mine once said, it was promoting.